let's take a look at the X-51 Wave Rider and how the Super Hornet could be getting a hypersonic weapons upgrade. The Navy's current air-deployed anti-ship weapon is the AGM-84 Harpoon, which has been in service for decades. The AGM-84 is actually one of three versions of the Harpoon, the other two being the RGM-84 which is launched from surface ships and the third is the UGM-84 which can be launched from submarines. With over 7,000 examples built and operators spanning the free world, it is hard to argue against the Harpoon being a successful design. However, with its subsonic speeds and the quickly escalating capabilities of near-peer adversaries, the Harpoon could potentially be losing its effectiveness. It is becoming more evident that a hypersonic anti-ship missile would be effective in neutralizing enemy point defense systems by virtue of their greater than Mach 5 speeds. With a hypersonic missile, theoretically an attack could be launched from a thousand miles away, take less than 15 minutes to reach its target, and leave the defender with little or no warning. As a result, the Air Force and Navy have once again revived their efforts into hypersonic weapons missile research. There are basically two types of hypersonic missiles. Boost Glide hypersonic vehicles, which use a booster to accelerate up to speeds of Mach 20 and then deploy a glider which maneuvers to the target or strictly aerodynamic types which also use a booster but then activate a ramjet or scramjet to accelerate further. Unlike traditional ballistic weapons such as ICBMs, which follow a predictable flight path and can be intercepted, both types of hypersonic missiles can maneuver on their way to the target, thereby becoming unpredictable and evading enemy defenses. And in the words of the Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, hypersonic weapons could enable, quote, responsive, long-range strike options against distant, defended, and or time-critical threats where other forces are unavailable, denied access, or not preferred." End quote. Today, we will look at some of the developments in the ongoing hypersonic missile research programs and how they would conceptually work on the Super Hornet. One quick note, currently the U.S. is looking at using hypersonic weapons with conventional armaments. China and Russia are also working on hypersonic weapons but use nuclear warheads instead. More on that later. Hypersonic weapons research in the U.S. goes back to the early 2000s. In 2002, the High Fly program was initiated by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, and the Office of Naval Research, or ONR. Boeing and Aerojet cooperatively built the prototype which was launched from an F-15E Strike Eagle. In total, three tests were performed between 2007 and 2010. But combinations of software, booster, and battery issues caused each of the three tests to end in failure. Back in 2004, NASA's X-34 hypersonic research aircraft performed two successful record-breaking flights, attaining speeds of Mach 6.8 and then Mach 9.6. These two X-34 flights represented the world's first scramjet-powered hypersonic flights. A scramjet is a supersonic combustion ramjet with the notable difference that in a scramjet the airflow remains supersonic even at the exhaust. Additionally, in 2006, NASA's Dryden Research Center mounted an inert AIM-54 Phoenix missile under their F-15B aircraft and investigated the possibilities of using the Phoenix as a test vehicle. You've now seen the Phoenix missile on an Eagle, achievement unlocked. Next came the Wave Rider. The X-51 Wave Rider is a scramjet research experimental aircraft designed for hypersonic flights at Mach 5 plus speeds and altitudes of 70,000 feet. Receiving its official X-51 designation in 2005, the Wave Rider completed its first hypersonic flight in May of 2010. Following two unsuccessful flights in May of 2013, the X-51 flew over 6 minutes while sustaining Mach 5 speeds for 210 seconds. The word wave rider in aviation terms is a reference to aircraft which make use of compression lift, generated by their own shock waves. An early example of this was the XB-70 Valkyrie bomber, which used mechanically actuated wingtips that would be lowered to help generate compression lift. Being an aerodynamic hypersonic vehicle, the X-51 is actually composed of two parts. The first part is a solid rocket booster which is the same as the ones used by the rockets fired from the Army's M270 Multiple Launch Rocket System or MLRS. This booster accelerates the X-51 to a speed of about Mach 4.5 
before burning out and being jettisoned, at which point the Pratt & Whitney Rocketdyne SJY-61 scramjet then accelerates the X-51 to speeds approaching Mach 6. In flight tests, the X-51 has been carried aboard a B-52 up to an altitude of around 50,000 feet before being launched. Interestingly, the X-51 represents the Air Force's most significant reinvestment into hypersonic research since the X-15, which flew over 60 years ago. I've made a video about the X-15, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Getting back to the Wave Rider, the X-51 has potential, but has a relatively high scramjet activation speed, typically around Mach 4. This means that a larger or heavier booster is needed to attain these higher speeds. However, just last year, Congress established the Joint Hypersonic Transition Office, which has provided funding to Boeing to complete preliminary design and ground testing for a dual combustion ramjet. A dual combustion ramjet would have lower activation speeds and could theoretically be made smaller and lighter. This new effort is being called High Fly 2 and has the goal of awarding contracts for hypersonic missiles in fiscal 2022. As a result, the Navy is hopeful the dual combustion ramjet can be made small and light enough to mount on a Super Hornet. The unofficial requirement is for the Super Hornet to be able to equip up to four of these missiles and still be able to land on the carrier with all the missiles on board. Boeing's High Fly 2 will likely compete against other technology demonstrators in development, which include a Lockheed Martin Aerojet entry and a Raytheon Northrop Grumman entry. There are plans to fly the competing demonstrators by the end of this year under the Hypersonic Air Breathing Weapon Concept or HAWC program, which is jointly funded by DARPA and the Air Force. A Super Hornet equipped with these missiles would both prove to be a deterrent to potential hostile forces seeking to attack a carrier group as well as provide first strike capabilities to neutralize high value targets with little warning. Given their very long range, the Super Hornet could stay well out of the defender's engagement zone and use stealth assets such as F-35s or F-22s to designate a target for the missile to fire on. Conceivably, drones launched from submarines could also perform this targeting task. Additionally, Growlers could provide electronic countermeasures support for the hypersonic armed Super Hornet providing a further layer of protection. Without a doubt, any fighter-sized hypersonic missile will be very expensive and initially available in relatively low numbers, once again making the case for the use on only the highest priority targets. Therefore, there still is a place for the AGM-84 Harpoon, just no longer perhaps as the first option. Meanwhile, the Air Force has been working on the AGM-183 Air Launch Rapid Response Weapon, or ARRW. The AGM-183 is a boost glide hypersonic weapon which boosts the missile to speeds of up to Mach 20 and then the warhead glides and maneuvers to its target. Currently, the AGM-83 has been fitted to a B-52 for testing. The Air Force is considering using its remaining fleet of B-1 bombers to carry up to 31 AGM-183s and be used as a launch platform. A booster test of the AGM-183 was conducted in April of 2021 but did not successfully launch. As mentioned earlier, China and Russia are also developing hypersonic missiles. However, in both cases, the intention is to arm the missiles with nuclear payloads and as a result do not require as much precision as the missiles the US is working on. For example, China has been working on a nuclear-capable ALBM or air-launched ballistic missile and has given it the designation of CHAS-X-13. China has also performed tests as recently as 2018 on a scramjet vehicle called the Starry Sky 2. At the same time, Russia's Zircon hypersonic anti-ship missile could be using a scramjet propulsion system, but it is unknown at this time the exact technologies that are used in the Zircon. Given these developments, the United States is ramping up its efforts to enter a new area of mass production of hypersonic missiles. With a legacy of hypersonic research and test aircraft that date all the way back to the 1950s and the X-15, there's a large amount of experience to learn from, including the Advanced Maneuvering Reentry or AMARV program that ran until 1988, and of course, the Space Shuttle which provided over 30 years of data on hypersonic reentry procedures. Today, Boeing's X-37 Orbital Test Vehicle, which is a reusable robotic spacecraft, continues to provide data on hypersonic research. All of this research and development could produce a fighter-sized hypersonic anti-ship missile within the next four to five years. 
which would breathe new life into the Super Hornet and provide a significant deterrent to near-peer adversaries who are intent on taking out a carrier battle group. What do you think? Are hypersonic missiles the weapon of the future? Could they change air-to-air -air combat? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the subscribe button and then click the bell for notifications. Stay safe and see you next time.